All right. So for this problem, we need to solve for substitution. All right. And remember substitution, what we need to do is we need to find a variable that we're going to solve for. That's the first step. So I need to look at my variables. Are you going to choose? You want to choose it? OK, hold on. First thing I want to do, though, is determine what is the easiest variable to solve for, meaning what is the easiest variable for me to isolate, to get by itself. Now, when you're thinking about that, well, how do I know what is the easiest? Think about what is the least amount of operations, right? Remember when we solve for a variable, we have to use inverse operations. We undo addition and subtraction first, and then we have to undo multiplication and division. So we need to think about which variable is going to allow us to do the least amount of operations. And Dimitri, you would say the easiest one to solve for would be the y in the top one. Now, why is that one easier than the y in the bottom? Well, all we need to do to solve for this one is to subtract the 2y. We only need to undo addition of, I'm sorry, only need to undo addition of 2x. Right? We don't need to undo multiplication and division because our variable is being multiplied by 1, which we already want. So, Ashley's so excited to be looking at this one. So the first thing we need to do is solve. So I solve for y. Well, how do you solve for y? We get it by itself by undoing. So I have y equals negative 2x plus 4. All right, I always just like writing the variable in front of, the, um, front of our constant because that's what I'm used to. So now what we knew is I know my value for y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Their values are exactly the same. However, are the expressions the same? No, they're different. However, their values are exactly the same. So that means you can substitute one in for the other, right? As long as their values are the same, you can put one in for the other. That's why we call it the substitution method, because what you're doing is you're substituting one value in for the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y, and I'm going to substitute in for y negative 2x plus 4. But I'm going to do that in my second equation. So my next problem is I take 3x plus 2, and instead of multiplying it by y, I'm going to multiply it by its substituted value, which is negative 2x plus 4. Now remember, I do this because by, substitute, by plugging in my substituted value, I now have just eliminated what variable? My y. And since now I only have one variable, can I solve this equation for x? Yes. So now I use distributive property, and I get 3x minus 4x plus 8 equals 1. 3x minus 4x is negative x plus 8 equals 1. Subtract the x, subtract the x, subtract 8. So I have negative x equals 1 minus 8 um, is going to be negative 7. Divide by negative 1, x equals 7. So that now means, just like you'd solve an equation, the value of my variable x equals 7. Now to find the value of y, I need to plug in. I can substitute the value of x in for I can plug the value of 7 or I can plug the value 7 in for x. So I'm going to go back over to this equation. You can plug 7 in for x into one of these two, but I already spent my time solving for y, right? And that's what I need to find the new value for. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to plug in y equals -2 times 7 plus 4. So negative 2 times 7 is a negative 14. Negative 14 plus 4 is negative 10. So therefore, the solution that makes my equation true is 7 and negative 10. And remember, when we looked at graphing, we wrote that as a, as a coordinate point. So I want you to write your, your solution as a coordinate point, which would be 7 comma negative 10. Any questions? No? Good? Awesome.